This is not a video I was looking forward to film. In fact, I wish I never had to talk about this from my personal experience, but it happened. My content got stolen and in this video I will talk you through how I discovered this copyright infringement and what I've done to deal with it. And since it happened less than two weeks ago, I thought this would be the best time for me to film a video about it so that we can learn from this experience together. Hello friends and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Alisa and I help qualified coaches build financially viable coaching businesses. I guess it's safe to say that I've defined my target audience and refined my content to such an extent that others have drawn inspiration from it. In fact, they've done more than that and we'll get to the story in a second. Before we do that though, I want to talk about copyright for a moment because it can be quite a complex and sometimes confusing subject. I found it so anyway. The official definition of copyright is a type of intellectual property that protects the rights of its original author as the owner of it as soon as that author fixes it in a tangible work of expression. What does that even mean? It means that as soon as an original piece of work is locked in the form of a painting, a photograph, a blog post, a book, or anything that is considered a tangible work of expression, that piece of work becomes the copyright or the intellectual property of its author. There are a few elements of this definition that we need to pay attention to. An original piece of work is considered something that was independently created by someone while using a certain degree of creativity. Independent creation means you created it yourself without copying. And fixing a piece of work means expressing it in a medium that is sufficiently permanent for it to be accessed or perceived for a longer period of time. So an example is writing a blog post. This medium is sufficiently permanent so that your work as the author of that blog post is considered fixed and therefore protected by copyright. And one final thing worth knowing is that copyright only protects expression, not ideas, concepts or principles. You cannot copyright the concept of choosing a coaching niche, for example, but you can copyright the way you express that idea via articles, videos, podcast episodes and other forms of tangible expression. I hope that makes sense and it gives you an overview of what copyright is. I have used the website copyright.gov to learn this information and to share it with you here and I will link to it in the description box as well if you want to find out more about this topic. On that note, here's a quick disclaimer before we go any further. I am not a legal professional and therefore this video is not meant to be legal advice. I'm only sharing what I know and how I dealt with copyright infringement myself. So please, if you are in a similar situation, do your own research and take this video as indicative, not as legal advice. All right, now that we know what copyright is and the disclaimer is out of the way, I want to talk about the difference between copycats and copyright infringement. A copycat is someone who is copying your ideas and the concepts behind your work but presents them in a way that is slightly different than what you do. And sometimes copycats are innocent. They admire your work so much and they want to follow your lead without realizing that what they're doing is not entirely ethical. But the clue is in the fact that they've told you they are using your work as inspiration. So my reaction to that is to help them find their own voice and encourage them to create something original by giving them some valuable feedback. And I can see from their responses that they didn't copy with malicious intent, but because they didn't know what else to do. Some copycats, however, know exactly what they're doing. And they are either too lazy or they have no clue how to put together an original piece of work that is of good quality. So they take inspiration from others. There's a gray area here, whether they are infringing on copyright because the criteria to judge that is whether their work is identical or sufficiently similar to yours. So you'll have to make a judgment call here and decide based on that. What I usually do is let it slide if I can sense that the person has made some effort into providing extra value on top of what they copied from me. But sometimes if I find it's too similar, 
I will post a public comment to let their audience and themselves know that I am aware they are lifting my ideas. But unfortunately, this is about as much as you can go in a civilized manner if there is no copyright infringement involved. Copyright infringement happens when someone copy pastes an original piece of work or parts of it without asking for your permission and without quoting you or your original work. In this case, you can say with certainty that your copyright has been infringed upon and act accordingly. I'm going to talk about what I have done and what I'm doing to deal with copyright infringement. But first, you have to know about it to do something about it. Here's the story of how I discovered that my work was stolen. I came across a Medium article where the author was complaining about the very same thing, their work being stolen. And after reading it, I thought, hmm, let me do a quick Google search on a few of my articles and see what comes up. The second search I did returned a few results that were not linked to me or any of the websites I write on. So I clicked on those links and I discovered that someone had taken parts of one of my articles and presented them as their own on their Facebook page and on their LinkedIn profile. I offered a lot more value inside the original article, but they only shared parts of it with a link to book a call with them if you want to learn more. Now, my assumption is that they would have given some more information on a call, again, from my article, and then possibly even sell the lead magnet that I was offering for free with that article. It was a bit of a shock to discover it, to be honest, but I have to say it didn't surprise me all that much. When you constantly share your work publicly, and if that work is of good quality, at some point people will start to notice it and some will decide to copy it. As John Esperian, a colleague and LinkedIn expert, said to me on Twitter, as soon as you create something worth sharing, you also create something worth stealing. And he's right. It comes with the territory, but that doesn't make it hurt any less. So my first piece of advice is before you do anything else, take some time to process it. I went from being shocked that someone could do this to feeling vulnerable and robbed because someone did this to me. And then I experienced anger towards platforms like LinkedIn and Facebook for allowing this to happen in the first place and for not having measures in place to prevent copyright infringement. You have to allow yourself to go through all these stages and understand what this situation means for you and how you'd like to take it forward. I don't recommend reacting on an impulse or doing something you might regret later. Even if the infringer acted in an illegal and unethical way, you are still a professional and you want to deal with this in a professional manner. Before we move on to the actual steps I took, if you're getting value from the video so far, I would appreciate it if you gave it a big thumbs up and consider subscribing. If you're inclined to leave a comment, that would make my day. It really helps to support the channel and I thank you in advance if you do. Okay, after I processed this information and the initial reactions of shock, vulnerability and anger went away, I got to work on putting together my copyright infringement case. The first step I took was to gather evidence and information. For evidence, I took a screenshot of their LinkedIn and Facebook posts where they used my work and I made sure to include the address bar when I took these screenshots. I then opened a document where I saved relevant links such as their LinkedIn profile, the link to the post itself and the link to their Facebook page. I couldn't save the link to the post inside Facebook, but I made a note of the date it was posted so that I can easily find it later. And guess what? They posted it on Christmas Day. Yeah. I then took screenshots of my own article and highlighted the parts that were copied word for word. And that was the evidence gathering. Then I moved on to information gathering. From their LinkedIn post, I clicked on the link that said book a call with me and it took me to a Calendly page. I also found their website and I noticed it was powered by Strikingly. This person are also affiliated with a particular educational institution, which I won't name here, but I made a note of that as well, together with their email address. My goal here was to find out the companies this person does business 
with or associates themselves with and I'll explain later why. Once I got all the information I could find and, and I thought was relevant, I then moved on to writing a cease and desist letter. If you don't know what that is, a cease and desist letter is a letter you send to the infringer asking them to stop infringing on your intellectual property. Now you can find templates of such letters online, but essentially a cease and desist letter says something like this. Dear infringer, it has come to my attention that you've been copying my work without my consent and without quoting me, and here is the evidence that I have for it. And this is where you would provide links to your work and links to where they have copied it and use it and zero. So you are infringing on my copyright and breaking copyright law X, Y, Z. Then you have to say what you want them to do. In my case, it was to delete the post in question and anything they might have on their computer or other devices in relation to my original article and to stop copying my stuff in the future. I then gave them a date by which to respond and let me know that they've done so. The final paragraph of the letter said that if they don't respond by that date, I will send a copy of that letter to the companies and organizations they do business with to bring this to their attention as well and ask them to take action. This is why I did information gathering as my first step, so that I could mention these companies in the letter. I gave them a week to respond and guess what? They didn't bother to say anything. I had every intention of solving this in an amicable way, but because they didn't respond, I proceeded to report the copyright infringement on LinkedIn and on Facebook. Both platforms have a way for you to do that and I will leave some links in the description box for you. I received an email confirmation from both platforms that my claim has been submitted and I was given a claim number. This is important in case you want to follow up with your claim later. But LinkedIn removed the posts from their platform immediately while Facebook required some more information to verify that I am indeed the rights owner or their representative. So keep that in mind when you do make the claim. As soon as I provided them with this extra information, they also removed the post in question and they closed the case. Now I would expect that both platforms contacted the infringer to let them know that they've been reported for copyright infringement and hopefully they will have learned a lesson. I am monitoring them closely and if they ever do it again, I will put together an email and send it to the other companies this person does business with and make them aware of the situation. I haven't gone down the naming and shaming route, but I will if I have to. Now in my case, this is a mild situation where the infringer has only copied one piece of content, but I know people who had this happen to them at a much bigger scale. In that case, I would probably seek legal help and that's what I would advise you to do as well if you're in that situation. What I would also advise is to write a short copyright claim at the end of each of your articles, in the description of your videos, in the show notes of your podcast, in your lead magnets and everywhere else you share your work. It adds an extra layer of protection. I didn't get around to doing that yet, but it is on my to-do list and it will happen soon. In the meantime, what I have done is to invest in a membership that gives me access to a great variety of legal documents and contracts, again, to add an extra layer of protection to my work. I will link to that in the description box as well. And that is my story of copyright infringement and how I've dealt with it. I hope you found this video useful. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'm Alisa and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.